Welcome to this forum for candidates. I'm Lonnie McCauley of the Anoka County League of Women Voters, sponsors of this forum. Co-sponsors are Coon Rapids Women of Today, Metro North Chamber of Commerce, North Suburban Optimist Club, and Transformational Circle. All candidates were invited to the forum. The League of Women Voters does not support or oppose any political candidate or party for office. The League does help citizens become informed voters and advocates for important issues. That's what this evening is all about, informing voters. Assisting in the forum tonight are Linda Rogers, Kathy Tinklestead, Rita Newton, and Deanne Christensen, League of Women Voters members. If you're interested in the League, Google LWVABC. Women, men, and young people are invited to join. A quick note to those who have watched Meet the Candidates over the years, the COVID situation, among other things, has necessitated a couple of changes. There is no live audience. We are taping this forum with a skeleton crew. Also, we are taping early in the election season so that all voters can have information about candidates before casting their ballots. Our candidates for Ward 1 are Brad Greskowiak and Shalonda Ship Gordon. Candidates for Ward 2 are Bill Kicker and Carrie Rerauer. Candidates for Ward 4 are Jeff Cosman and Jenny Geisler. Candidates for Council at Large are Pat Carlson and Christopher, or I should say, Chris, yeah, Christopher Geisler. They will answer several questions and make closing remarks. They will alternate who will answer questions first, and the answers are limited to one minute unless otherwise stated. Thank you, candidates, for speaking to voters about issues tonight and for running for public office in the great city of Coon Rapids. I'm now going to introduce Linda Rogers, who is our moderator for the evening. Linda. Thanks, Lonnie. As Lonnie told you, my name is Linda Rogers, and I'm a member of the Anoka, Blaine, Coon Rapids Area League of Women Voters, along with Lonnie. I live in Anoka and can't vote for either of these candidates. Let's get to know them a little and hear what they have to say about Coon Rapids issues. We'll begin with an opening statement. Candidates can explain their background, why they're running for office, and their goals for Coon Rapids. And we'll begin with Shalanda Ship Gordon. Good evening. Hello, I would like to say thank you to the League of Women Voters for giving me this opportunity to speak to the people of Coon Rapids. My name is Shalanda Ship Gordon and I've lived in Coon Rapids for almost three years now. Um, I'm a mother of four beautiful children, Davion, who's 25, Valencia, who's 23, and Dejanay, who's 22, and Dayara, who's 12. I am also a grandmother um, of a five-year-old awesome little boy um, named Josiah. Um, I love to stay active in my community. I have volunteered at Feed My Starving Children, um, local food shelves, Toys for Tots, and participated in Walk for Education. I'm running for change um, within our community. I want to be a voice for the, the individuals who reside in Coon Rapids who feel as though their voices are not heard. I would like to bring a balance to the council. Thank you. Thank you. Brad Kreskowiak. And thank you to the League of Women Voters for uh, uh, holding this forum. My name is Brad Ruskoviak. I have lived in Coon Rapids for the past 32 years. I am currently serving on the Coon Rapids City Council representing Ward 1, where I was elected in 2016. I have been married to my wife Kim for 28 years and we have four children, all of whom attended Epiphany High School and then Coon Rapids High School. My youngest will be in the 12th grade this year and one daughter and son have both attended Anoka Ramsey Community College here in Coon Rapids. I studied college, but I've made my career in business. I am currently employed as a global account manager for a Fortune 500 company. In this role, I interact with a diverse group of people, and I work primarily out of my home in Ward 1. I currently serve on the Anoka Hennepin Community Education Advisory Board, on the Coon Rapids Economic Authority, and I've also had leadership roles in the scouting organization and coached for Coon Rapids uh, Little League. I believe my personal experience as small business owner coupled with my corporate management experience and four years on the council, have given me a balanced set of qualifications for this job, and I hope to earn your vote. Thank you. Our next question is one that's very timely. 
The Census Bureau has estimated that Coon Rapids may be 20% racially diverse as of 2020. Research shows that regions that attain more economic growth are those with greater racial inclusion and smaller racial income gaps. What are your thoughts on how the city can address barriers to racial equity in Coon Rapids? And Brad, you'll answer for first. Uh, first of all, the city must always treat individuals fairly and equally, and I believe we do. We have quite a cross-section of people calling Coon Rapids home, and I'll focus on everyone in a fair-minded way that unites us. When you get right down to it, we are all, all pretty much the same. I think your question actually frames up the answer pretty well. One of the biggest disparities in terms of racial equity is the income disparity. It's real, and that is a barrier. So to that end, I am very pro-business, and as a city, our policies should encourage and foster job growth in our community. Having employment opportunities that are close to where people live is critical and it allows people to switch job and move up if one job does not work out. Another way that our city can help this uh, equity barrier is to encourage home ownership as that builds wealth for families. We can do this by keeping our taxes low and supporting programs such as the Front Door Home Improvement Program. Additionally, and most importantly, as a city, we should reject all forms of discrimination and I believe that we do. Thank you. Shalanda. I would say build trust, making smart policy decisions that can reduce racial inequities as well as reduce racial tension within our community. Um, also get the facts about the disparities within our city um, and work together to fix those disparities. Um, also, um, listen to all residents, especially the ones who feel as though their voices are being drowned out. Um, and I want to be that vocal leader within our community um, and promote racial equity programs, policies, and practices. And also have those courageous conversations that's overdue and well needed within our community and make sure everyone feels involved. So. Thank you. Cities respond to county, state, and federal directions regarding COVID. Are there other steps specific to Coon Rapids that should be initiated? Shalanda Ship Gordon. I believe that we're doing the best that we possibly can right now with the information that we have readily available to us. Um, this virus is new. We know very little about it. So look into the CDC guidelines, um, look into medical professionals, um, and adhering to those guidelines and enforcing those guidelines within our community is going to be crucial. Um, learning um, the information that's coming down the pipeline, adhering to that information and enforcing that information is going to be crucial, is very crucial. Um, new information is coming out weekly, sometimes daily. So um, adapting and conforming and um, being open-minded to this um, the barriers or the hindrances that this virus has caused within our community um, is crucial. So, learning as we go. Brad Kreskoviak. Coon Rapids has been following all federal, state, county, and CDC guidelines and mandates, and I support all of those efforts to contain the virus. The council also enacted emergency measures that allowed us to act quickly and react quickly as needed. These have all been important measures. As far as other measures, we have taken the proactive initiative to distribute no-cost disposable face coverings to local businesses so the customers that may not have a mask can go ahead and get one, and I support that initiative. In addition, we have set up a grant program for local businesses that may need assistance in keeping their doors open and employing people. We have earmarked a large part of our federally funded CARES Act distribution for this purpose. I have personally made efforts to bring awareness and support of this to our business community. And interestingly, just today I learned that uh, the Minnesota Housing Finance Agency launched a COVID-19 housing assistance program, and our office can certainly help with that as well. And Brad, you'll answer the next question first. Okay. This current solar ordinance permits only rooftop installations, not solar gardens. Would you support solar fields in appropriate locations that residents could subscribe to? Sure. Well, the question says uh, solar gardens, but if the question really is, do I support solar fields, let me start by saying that having an engineering background, I have always been interested in all forms of renewable energy, including solar. 
In fact, I've come very close to working in the solar energy field. As far as installations in Coon Rapids, I would not oppose them in the appropriately zoned areas. As leaders, we are responsible for land use in our community and we are tasked with looking into the future for at that available land. Coon Rapids has two energy providers, both of whom are investing heavily into our solar and, and energy needs. Minnesota as a whole has become a national leader in renewables. I think rather than having Coon Rapids become a micro energy entity, I'd support letting the experts in energy production and distribution provide cost efficient market driven solutions. That said, I do fully support property owners rights for installing solar on their homes. In fact, I, I encourage that. Thank you. Shalanda. Absolutely. Um, I, I will say at least making an option for the residents um, who's interested in the solar panels. Um, yes, in the long run, it's cheaper, it's safer, and it's um, renewable energy. So yes, I absolutely will support that. And Shalanda, you'll lead us off on the next question. What do you see as the greatest need or challenge for youth in Coon Rapids? And how would you, as an elected official, help solve this issue? Absolutely. I will say overall youth engagement. Um, being in this pandemic has taught us a whole lot. It's taught us so much. So when activities are not readily available to our youth, um, keeping them engaged, getting them involved, involved in their communities. Um, and our youth today pretty much is our senior citizens for tomorrow. So keeping their attention focused on their community around them, um, how they can best serve their community, get them involved in conversations on the city council, in the, in the office that's making decision about their lives, about their future. So yes, I would say, um, increase programs that get them involved, increase their knowledge and their understanding and their commitment to their, to their communities overall. So yes, um, I would say overall youth engagement. Thank you. Brad. First of all, I believe all youth, the youth in our community especially, deserve stable homes and families, good education and access to health care, and of course, access to a fair paying local jobs. In an earlier question, I pointed out my business position and I strongly believe in fostering a vibrant and growing economy that our youth can participate in. Youth prosper much more than monetarily by having the responsibility that employment provides. I have also been very supportive of parks renovations and the ongoing maintenance operations that keep them going. We are continuing to update facilities including the soccer fields in 2021, giving our youth even more opportunities to be outside and participating in healthy activities. As a city, we have been long-term supportive of all types of youth sports as well. As a city, we also need to be a supporting partner with our schools and colleges, and you'll have a solid advocate in me in that regard. If elected, what would you do to provide a healthy business climate? Brad Kreskoviak. Thank you. Well, this subject has been touched on in earlier questions, and by now I hope you can see that I'm very supportive of our business community and the local economy in general. It's not enough to be pro-business. We must ensure that our city is responsive to the needs and requests of our local businesses. Our city has a robust community development program led by very good and hardworking individuals, and we must lean on them at all times to create programs and support mechanisms that foster a healthy local economy. As a city leader, I work with a focus to keep our taxes reasonable while supporting long-term investments in our infrastructure and roads, bridges and utilities. I support the work of our Economic Development Authority, of which council members are board members, to assist local businesses in growing and keeping jobs local. I also support a third lane on Highway 10 as it draws people from all over the region to our largest retail center, Riverdale Shopping District, which includes many, many businesses and employs very many people in our city. Thank you. Shalanda. Um, yes, I will push to implement public policies that will not only support our local businesses, but also create an atmosphere where we can create local jobs within our community. We have to pour into our businesses and give back to our businesses. Um, 
um, by lowering taxes or keeping taxes at a reasonable rate. Also, um, creating a healthy, diverse workforce within our community and, and encourage, excuse me, and encourage retention uh, with our family businesses, our local businesses, as well as our residents. So retaining our businesses um, is crucial, so yes. Thank you. Do you favor more affordable or more market rate apartments in Coon Rapids? Shalanda Ship Gordon. I favor more affordable apartments here in Coon Rapids. Um, and defining affordable, it does not mean Section 8. It does not mean low income. It merely means our working class citizens, our working class community members, our local teachers, our local law enforcement um, enforcement agents, our, our cashiers, our administrative assistants, being able to afford an apartment in the community that they serve and that they work in. So yes, absolutely, I will support affordable um, housing here in Coon Rapids. Brad Chris Goviak. Um, I believe every community needs to provide an environment with a wide range of housing options, and in Coon Rapids, we actually do just that. Lifestyles and income levels change, and our community needs to foster housing operations that uh, housing options that that match that changing lifestyle characteristic. According to the Met Council, we are doing great in terms of our housing mix, including affordable and market rate apartments and affordable homes. In addition to the affordable rate apartments along Highway 10 and 610 in the Springbrook area, nearing completion right now, and another proposed market rate appointment apartment along Highway 10, I feel we will have attained the right mix of housing options well into the future. So after those two apartment buildings, I do not support adding any more at this time in Coon Rapids. Additionally, I would be very hard pressed to support any type of tax instrument uh, financing districts that, that go along with that. More about building in Coon Rapids. Brad, do you favor over a $20 million expansion of the ice arena to include basketball courts, a walking track, and indoor playground? That's, that's a big number, 20 million. Um, the future of the ice center on Coon Rapids Boulevard, uh, it, which is a fantastic community amenity, by the way, has been on the city council planning radar for many years, well before I became elected in 2016. Ever since the scaled back version of that community center was constructed, there has been a long-term vision uh, to expand the community center. Um, in fact, we were uh, moving toward that before the pandemic tended to slow us down a little bit and that's somewhat idled. But to answer your question, yes, I would favor an economically responsible expansion if it served more than the sports community. That is to say, it would need to be a true community center, serving all of Coon Rapids constituents. In addition, any city project of that scope, financially, again, a big number, over 20 million, I believe deserves full community buy-in, and I would favor a referendum on the subject. You also have to consider that we still have 15 years to pay on the original construction of the ice arena. Shalanda, what do you think? I do think 20 million is a huge number. Um, so from a, con a concept perspective, then absolutely yes. However, from an operational perspective, I will need more information about this project um, to make a sound and wise decision. Um, do we, was there a, a needs assessment performed? Um, and if so, it does it make financial sense to um, expand the arena. So. Thank you. Back to business. Shalanda Ship Gordon, please describe any experiences you have owning or managing a business, as well as specific advocacy efforts on behalf of the local small business community. I was the HR director for almost 13 years at a local charter school, and I'm currently the team manager for a homeless shelter here in Anoka. Um, I've partnered with local businesses in efforts to support education um, and efforts of ending homelessness. Um, whether if it's collaborating with local businesses um, by being a resource for employment opportunities for our students, employment opportunities for our senior citizens, such as the Foster Grandparents um, Program, Reading and Math Corps, also um, employment opportunities for our residents, or simply purchasing supplies um, from local businesses to keep them afloat and pouring back and giving back into our local businesses. Thank you. Brad? 
Well, as far as experience owning and managing a small business, I, I have that. In the early 90s, I owned and operated an automotive repair shop in Brooklyn Center. I got out of that business after I hurt my back, but overall, it was a great experience. Later in the mid-2000s, I co-owned and operated an advertising business. Unfortunately, my good friend and business partner passed away suddenly, and we sold that business. But in both cases, I learned a lot, and I know the kind of work that goes into owning and operating a small business. It's not easy by any stretch of the imagination, and I really respect and admire folks that start and operate small business. Again, my position on supporting small business is pretty well established, and I will continue to work with the Community Development Department. I also attend and support the North Metro Chamber of Commerce, the local Rotary Club. I attend the Coon Rapids Business Council roundtables. In addition, I have earned endorsements from the Minnesota Association of Realtors and the North Metro Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Brad Kreskoviak. <laughs> this is a true Coon Rapids question. Do you think that Coon Rapids Boulevard is healthy and successful? If not, what would you do to change that? If so, what would you see as the highlights of Coon Rapids Boulevard? This is a great question, and it's been on people's minds for decades, right? But yes, I do think Coon Rapids Boulevard is successful, more so all the time. Can we do better? Yes, we can. And with the right leadership, we will continue on that path. This was a campaign issue for me in 2016, and I'm proud of the work we've been able to accomplish since I was elected to council. Since then, there have been steady redevelopment along the corridor, including major additions to Mercy Hospital, the walkway over the plaza, a local brewery, and as you move east, you'll see the new community amenity, the splash pad at Boulevard Plaza, a new Speedway convenience store, and coming soon, a new concept design for a caribou coffee shop. Of course, much of this development over the next couple of years is going to center around the Centra Homes development of 100 single family homes. This is a major accomplishment for our city and one that I have been proud to be a part of. Thank you. Shalanda Ship Gordon. Yes, I do think, um, think that Coon Rapids Boulevard is healthy and successful. We have local shops, restaurants, family-owned businesses along the boulevard. Um, we have newly built homes and new homes coming down the pipeline. Um, but I do also think as time progresses, there's always going to be um, room for growth and development. So yes, I do believe that it's healthy and successful. Thank you. City Council's chief responsibility is to set strategies for the city. What strategic initiatives would you push for? Shalanda Ship Gordon. I'll push for more diversity and inclusion initiatives within our community, um, improve transportation, overall transportation within our community, improve transportation for our senior citizens, um, and a more environmentally sustainable um, community overall. Yeah. Brad Griskoviak. I'm working for building a safe and vibrant community. This takes many strategic shapes and forms from improving our image to drawing investment by private business to collaborating with state, county, and local agencies on those big projects. It takes all of us to think ahead. Many strategic initiatives may not even be realized in my term. Nonetheless, we must provide that vision. We have a great community along a quiet stretch of the Mississippi River, but most people don't really even know that about Coon Rapids. For instance, we don't have a city-owned park, recreational area, boat access, or restaurant along the river. Yes, we have the county park at the dam, but I'd like to see more. So that's one uh, strategic initiative I would favor. Also, things like gaining a full access interchange on Highway 610. I believe that would improve access to Coon Rapids for both residents and businesses, and that's a strategic element that includes that cross-governmental uh, agency collaboration as does supporting a third lane on Highway 10 from Hanson to Round Lake. I am supportive of that initiative as well. Improving Highway 10 would reduce commute times for our families as well as serve the Riverdale Shopping Center, which is a regional draw and makes up about 5% of our tax base. Thank you. Thank you. And Brad, Brad Griskoviak, <laughs> you will now be the first to make your closing statement. Again, thank you to the League of Women Voters for inviting us here tonight and letting us have a little conversation with you. Um, I have learned a lot during my three and a half years on the council, and I wish to continue to serve the residents of, of Ward 1. I ask for your vote for a second term. 
I think Coon Rapids is a great city. I made the choice 20 years ago as our family was growing to remain here, and I'm so glad I did. I remain heavily vested in our community and wish to serve it longer. We have great neighborhoods, great neighbors, our parks are renovated, and we enjoy low crime and great public services. Our taxes are moderate, and we get a lot for our money. Of course, we can always do better, and I hope to contribute in a positive way in this role on the City Council. Again, my name is Brad Griscoviak, and I ask for your vote in November, or whatever you decide to vote this year with mail-in. More information for me can be found at bradforcouncil.com. That's brad, the number four, council.com. And again, thank you. Shalanda Ship Garden, your closing statement. I would like to say that since moving here almost three years ago, I have fell in love with Coon Rapids, the parks, the, my neighbors. Um, I want to be a good leader here in Coon Rapids, a reliable, a reliable leader. But in order to be a good leader here in, um, within our community, we have to be a reliable follower of good leadership. Um, so I do believe that my people skills, my leadership skills, and my knowledge of the workforce will bring a balance and add insight to the city council. Um, I want to be more people focused, more people centered here in Coon Rapids. Um, I want to be able to build trust with our, with our residents. So I want to thank the, the League of Women Voters for granting me this opportunity to speak to the people of Coon Rapids. Um, and I am asking for your support and for your vote in the upcoming election um, in November. More information about me can be found at VoteShalanda.com. Thank you again. Thank you to our candidates, Shalanda Ship Gordon and Brad Kriskoviak. Thank you for sharing your views with the public and for running for public office. Thank you to CTN for taping and showing this forum. And thanks to our co-sponsors, Transformative Circle, Coon Rapids Women of Today, Metro North Chamber of Commerce, and the North Suburban Optimist Club. The League of Women Voters has supported informed voting for over 100 years. In the year 2020, we have many options to vote. Exercise your right to vote. Want to know the who, what, when, and where of Coon Rapids? Then just follow CTN on social media. It's that simple. Whether it's Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, keep up with local news, sports, and events, and the people who make our community such a great place to live. So give us a follow, like, share, or subscribe, and always be the first to know what's up in Coon Rapids. That's CTN, helping you stay connected. We'll interview candidates Bill Kicker and Carrie Ray Wauer for Ward 2. We'll begin with an opening statement. Candidates can explain their background, why they're running for office, and their goals for Coon Rapids. We'll begin with Carrie Ray Wauer. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for all you do to support our democracy and our right to vote and for holding this forum tonight. I'm running for Coon Rapids City Council because I believe it takes all of us at every level of government to further our democracy. The council needs more balance and I can help provide that balance. I've lived in Coon Rapids for 20 years. My husband Dan and I bought our first and only home here. We raised our kids here and we plan to stay. My oldest started driving, so now I have time to give back to my community. My teaching career has spanned 20 years. I've learned a lot from the thousands of families I've worked with. I currently work for Education Minnesota. This position requ requires vision and problem solving. These qualities will help me as a city council member. In addition, I am honest, I truly care about people, and I enjoy learning from and working with others. Thank you. Bill Kicker, your opening statement. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bill Kicker. I am the current city council member for Ward 2 in Coon Rapids. I have also served on the uh, board member of Youth First. I grew up in Coon Rapids and I'm a 1983 graduate from Coon Rapids High School. I graduated from St. Cloud State University with an applied sociology degree and applied statistics minor. I married in 1994 and my wife Kim and I bought our first house in Coon Rapids the following year. And in 1996, 
Our daughter Katie was born in 1997. Our son Tommy was born. I was involved in many of their activities. I was president of the Parent Advisory Council for a few years, coached soccer and baseball. Um, I was a board member for Coon Rapids Youth Hockey Association and treasurer for Boy Scout Troop 212. I truly enjoy being involved in my community, which is the reason I decided to run again. Thank you. A timely question for us all. Bill Kicker, the Census Bureau has estimated that Cruden Rapids may be 20% racially diverse as of 2020. Research shows that regions that attain more economic growth are those with greater racial inclusion and smaller racial income gaps. What are your thoughts on how the city can address barriers to racial equity in Coon Rapids? Well, I think it's important to say that racial injustice is not something that our city tolerates or should tolerate. We should expect nothing less from our elected officials as well as our leaders and staff that work for the city of Coon Rapids that services our restaurant, rest, re residents and also from our residents. Building a positive, inclusive community is one way to reduce barriers to racial equity. It takes effort from everyone's part, however. I think it is important for all of us to make an effort to get to know our neighbors better, which is a step towards building a positive, inclusive community. We have had over 100 registered night to night parties last year in our city. This is a great way for different neighbors to hang out and get to know each other better. Last summer, my wife and I were inv invited to the daughter's wedding of our neighbors, new neighbors, held in their backyard. It was a traditional Ethiopian wedding. It's acts like this and efforts from our neighbors to share this experience with us that help break down barriers and bring more community between neighbors. Carrie Raywauer. I think it is important going forward to have true collaboration with people of color and community groups in Coon Rapids to get their input. By working together, we can make sure Coon Rapids becomes an inclusive city. The murder of George Floyd has brought to the forefront racial disparities in Minnesota, and this does include Coon Rapids. I went to a transformative circle event and an African-American woman right here at our own Cub Foods was followed, harassed, and taunted just for being black while grocery shopping. We cannot deny that racism exists. We must do what we can to support and engage people of color in our community, learn about our own implicit biases, and make decisions with equity as a core value. We must actively do this work and try, strive towards equity in all forms. This doesn't mean making cuts to the police here in Coon Rapids. In fact, I support the opposite. It does mean accepting the problem of racial disparity, researching the problem, learning more about it and how we can do better, and then actively putting those policies in place. Thank you. And Carrie will lead us off in answering the next timely question. Cities respond to county, state, and federal directions regarding COVID. Are there other steps specific to Coon Rapids that should be initiated? As a science teacher, I have been saddened by the distrust of science and the political division over COVID-19. This is a public health issue. Over 180,000 people have died of the virus in the U.S. and people should be getting the facts and our politicians should be sticking to the facts. As we learn more and collect more data, recommendations are adjusted. What we know today to be the most effective in reducing the spread is masking and social distancing. We are all in this together and we can all do our part to stop the spread. MDH, the Minnesota Department of Health, is doing a great job laying out guidelines based on top epidemiological experts. Coon Rapids can do its part by modeling and promoting masking and social distancing. I would like to see some public service announcements. Think back to the more you know commercials and even billboards promoting this. Bill Kicker. Coon Rapids was allocated $4.8 million of Federal Care Act's funds to help the city with expenses related to COVID-19. Coon Rapids Business Relief Fund is a program that will use 1.6 million of these funds to create grants for local businesses of less than 100 employees that can show hardship due to the pandemic. I also think it's important that we are cautious moving forward with our budget. Currently, the proposed tax levy for next year, which is the amount of the budget paid by residents and the businesses throughout, 
through property taxes is staying flat without any loss of service to them. For the safety of our staff and for its residents, it is important to be flexible and creative in our approach to handling services that are normally done face to face. For example, using Google Duo or FaceTime as a way of doing an inspection of rental property or other permitted work necessary of inspections. Thank you. Moving on to the field of energy. Bill Kicker, the current solar ordinance permits only rooftop installations, not solar gardens. Would you support solar fields in appropriate locations that residents could subscribe to? I would be open to the idea of solar gardens in our ordinance. I do feel this would need to be reviewed further. We do have limited open space left for development in our city, and we would want to make sure we are using the remaining land for most appropriate purpose. Solar gardens do not allow for multiple use of land, and green space is not necessarily recommended for this, for this use. Size is also a factor, as a one megawatt garden would require 2.5 acres for the panels alone, and an additional 1.5 for other equipment. Proximity to electric, electrical infrastructure would also be considered for this particular piece of property. These and other factors would need to be understood in order to assess this topic with more clarity. Thank you. Carrie Ray Bauer. Absolutely 100%. There is no better energy source than the sun. There's no pollution, no carbon dioxide emissions, no radio radioactive waste and no dependence on other countries. Two minutes worth of energy from the sun is enough to power everything electric that all people across the entire globe use in one year. We just need to harness it. I also want to continue and expand the Coon Rapids sustainability initiatives. Coon Rapids has a great start as a green step city, and we should continue this path to move from step two to step three. We can also do more in renewable energy initiatives and grant programs for homeowners. Our very own Excel Energy here in Minnesota was the first to commit to being 100% carbon-free electricity by 2050. As a city council, I think we can use our voice to encourage Centerpoint Energy to do the same. Speaking of energy, let's talk about youth. Carrie, what do you see as the greatest need or challenge for youth in Coon Rapids, and how would you as an elected official help solve this issue? As of April of this year, Anoka Hennepin Schools had over 1,100 homeless youth. We do have a huge success story. Hope for Youth, Hope Place opened in Coon Rapids in 2016. I'd like to work with Hope Place to find out if they are able to keep up with the need and demand and determine if they need more support. In addition to homelessness, there was a big spike in suicides this year in the Anoka Hennepin School District prior to the pandemic. Depression and anxiety rates continue to increase amongst young people. It's important that we increase access to mental health providers and reduce the stigma associated with mental health. Even when things are not traditionally part of the city budget, we can be advocates and the spokespeople to encourage this growth in our city. Our young people need fun and creative outlets. They need places to get together with other kids outside of the cliques that occur in school. During the pandemic, this has become essential. I'd like to see Coon Rapids offer more free outdoor programs, especially during this pandemic. Bill. I think the greatest need for youth in Coon Rapids is opportunity, whether that is opportunity in education, in community activities, or in youth sports, we want to be sure that we as a city and a community are supplying them with as much opportunity as we can. We have great public schools and that offer a multitude of opportunities for our youth. I'm a board member of Youth First, which is a nonprofit organization that the city helps fund. The organization supplies youth with support from their staff during the school year where they work inside the middle school and the high school. Youth also have a place to go during the summer where they have a lunch and snack, can spend time with their friends, go on field trips, participate in leadership activities, all free for kids in grades 6 through 12. We have a program for kids age 14 to 20 who are interested in law enforcement called the Police Explorers. 
I would like to see the development of a program similar to this, but focused on civics. I recently gave an hour-long presentation to the Boy Scout Troop 212 on civics as a requirement of the Citizens in Community Merit Badge. I have supported and participated in giving opportunity to youth for 25 years and will continue to do so. Thank you. And Bill Kicker, the next question is yours to lead off. If elected, what would you do to provide a healthy business climate? Sure. It is important that the business community know that they have the backing of the city. As a representative of the city, I've been a member of the North Metro Chamber of Commerce and a regular attendant of the quarterly Coon Rapids Business Council, which is a meeting that brings together businesses, lo local educators, city staff, and elected officials in an effort to keep all parties informed of each other's doings. I support, I support ordinance changes in the regional shopping center that gave regional shoppers more reason to choose Riverdale over Arbor Lakes. During this pandemic, I have helped get the word out about the business that had reopened as well as supported a temporary outdoor dining policy to allow restaurants to expand their premises. I have supported many of the high density developments in our city which will bring more potential customers. I have participated in many ribbon cutting and newly opened, for, of newly opened businesses and I have been a presence in an effort to show my support of our businesses. Thank you. Carrie Raybauer. If your city is vibrant like Coon Rapids, Coon Rapids is, the businesses will want to come here. By having available housing, great schools, and beautiful parks and trails, we are already ahead of the curve. Businesses want to be in a city like ours. We need to continue to invest in our infrastructure, including roads and parks, and keep these updated. We need to continue and expand the homeowner grant initiatives, like Home for Generations, that help our homeowners update and improve their homes. We should also grow our townhome, apartment, and senior living options to meet our residents' needs. By doing these things, we will promote a healthy business climate here in Coon Rapids. Thank you. And Carrie, continuing on with this question, do you favor more affordable or more market rate apartments in Coon Rapids? I think it's healthy for a city to have a good combination of both. I believe if someone is working hard at their job, 40 hours a week, making minimum wage, they should be able to afford a decent place to live. Right now, this is a concern for our city. Our newer rental apartment costs are too high for many. We need a higher proportion of affordable apartments. Every city needs people of all income levels living and thriving there. Thank you. Bill Kicker. Lira, which is Coon Rapids' first market rate apartment community built in over a decade, is the larger of the two apartments at Riverdale Station Flats. Nova, the smaller apartment building, is 80% affordable and 20% market rate. The combination of proximity to the commuter rail and the Riverdale area makes this an ideal location for both of these buildings. I am optimistic about a senior apartment being built in that same location. It is encouraging that Coon Rapids is able to attract market rate apartments as another piece of property has the interest of developers off of Foley and Highway 10. The Riverdale area with its big box stores may have to look at redevelopment in the future if the trend towards online purchasing continues to grow. The Sears building has not found a new renter and we may need to consider some mixed zoning in the future. I believe it is best to have a mixed housing stock and I think it is most important to look at each development individually to determine if it's right for this city. More about building. Do you favor over a $20 million expansion of the ice arena to include basketball courts, a walking track, and indoor playground? Bill Kicker. As a resident of Coon Rapids, I do support the expansion of the Coon Rapids Ice Center. The expansion would add the opportunity of, uh, of our youth by creating indoor playground facility, basketball courts that would allow youth to utilize, and a walking track that would, could be used for all ages to allow residents to continue healthy activities year round. The residential survey conducted in 2016 by the National Citizen Survey for Coon Rapids showed that development along Coon Rapids Boulevard was favored by 49% 
of the residents and road construction coming in second with 25%. It is not specific on what type of development, however. As a representative, as your representative, and under the pandemic conditions we are in, I do not think that now is the right time to move forward with a project of this size. It is difficult to know what the economic conditions will be like in the next year or two, or how long this pandemic will have us in its grips. I would like to hear more from residents on what their thoughts are. Carrie Raybauer, your thoughts. As I mentioned previously, if your city is vibrant, the people and the businesses will come. Andover and Blaine are out competing us in this specific area. Andover has a large community center and Blaine has the National Sports Center. When you have facilities like this, it helps the entire city. People want to move to a city with great facilities and crowds are drawn to events at these centers, which in turn helps the local businesses. I support the expansion, but it has to be economically feasible without too much tax burden. It should be decided on with a referendum and we should do a needs assessment to find out what would best support our communities of color, what our athletic teams need more access to, how we can best support our local seniors and families, and how we can support youth programs and youth mental health through this facility. Carrie, please describe any experiences you have owning or managing a business, as well as specific advocacy efforts on behalf of the local small business community. I own my own licensed daycare business when my children were little, so I know how much support our small businesses need. Our small business owners are the lifeblood of our communities. I support programs like the Coon Rapids Open to Business program, which provides free advisors and technical assistance to small business owners and to entrepreneurs who are looking to open their own business. I support the Coon Rapids Business Relief Grant program, which provides help to small businesses hit by COVID-19 losses. These programs are essential to our city and I would um, continue to support them. Thank you. Bill. My wife and I still own our first home that we bought in Coon Rapids and we currently rent it out. We manage this rental business ourselves. We have learned the importance of working together with our renter and the city in keeping things running smoothly. We have allowed our renters who are master gardeners the freedom to landscape as they wish. For the last three years, they have participated in garden tours to show off what they have done. We have met all of the city requirements for a rental license, which has produced a positive and safe place for our renters and a well-kept property for our former neighbors, which, we, which is very important to us. In 2016, prior to my election on the city council, I had advocated for an ordinance change to allow tap rooms, breweries, and brew pubs in Coon Rapids so that Alloy Brewing could open its doors. Alloy Brewing has become a bright spot on the Coon Rapids Boulevard for a place for locals to gather for fellowship, enjoy a game of bags on their outdoor patio, and even enjoy a meal from your favorite food truck, all while drinking very good beer. The next question is my favorite for this whole forum because it is so Coon Rapids. Do you think Coon Rapids Boulevard is healthy and successful? If not, what would you do to change that? And if so, what would you see as the highlights of Coon Rapids Boulevard? Bill Kicker. When I first campaigned in 2006 in Ward 3, many of the residents were concerned about Coon Rapids Boulevard. So this is an issue that's been around for a long time. With most of the major retail moving to Riverdale, the boulevard needed a new identity. We have seen a lot of positive development, most recently, and I think the boulevard is becoming healthy and successful. River North and Autumn Glen, our senior apartments, have been built more recent and, are, and we are currently seeing the Centra Homes development that includes 130 plus townhomes in Port Riverwalk area across from Lil Lilliput to add rooftops to the boulevard. Building the Coon Rapids Ice Center in a location more visible to the boulevard and addition of Boulevard Park and the splash pad all in the center have, have added reason to be on the boulevard. Alina Health at Mercy Hospital has invested millions to expand its campus, which has spurred further development of medical office buildings in Port Wellness area. It is not just me that feels this way. Coon Rapids, or Caribou Coffee proposes 
a caribou cabin on the southwest corner of Egret Boulevard, Egret and, Bull and the Boulevard, to show that they feel positive about the new developments as well. Thank you. Carrie Ray Roward. Coon Rapids Boulevard actually dates back to the 1800s as one of the oldest roads in this part of the country. It was called the Red River Ox Cart Trail, and that trail followed where East River Road and Coon Rapids Boulevard are today. Its history is deep. Today it's the longest commercial road through our city. It includes the Coon Rapids Ice Center, Mercy Hospital, and the Anoka Ramsey Community College. Because it has such a long history, some of the buildings need updating and there's potential for improvement there. I agree with the city's plan to continue to invest in this corridor. With investment, it can continue to be the heart of our city. Thank you. Carrie, you'll lead us up on the last question. City Council's chief responsibility is to set strategies for the city. What strategic initiatives would you push for? I would continue with the great programs we already have that help our homeowners and small business owners and continue our investments in Coon Rapids Boulevard and the Coon Rapids Ice Center. New strategic initiatives I would like to advocate for include racial and social justice and mitigating climate change. As I mentioned previously, I would like to see a portion of the city budget be dedicated toward racial, racial and social justice. For example, our city leaders could all participate in urban immersions, whose trainings are focused on educating participants about the complexities and root causes of poverty and social justice issues within our communities. I believe Coon Rapids can lead the way through embracing equity and helping all of its residents reach their full potential. Climate change will be the next great challenge we face. Here in Minnesota, we are already experiencing more intense storms and floods are becoming more frequent, causing increasing home and crop insurance rates. We can do more in renewable energy initiatives, including solar, grant programs for homeowners, and advocating for other clean energy alternatives. Bill Kicker. As I had previously mentioned, we will need to consider mixed zoning, meaning having potential for residential along with retail in the Riverdale area and other potential retail areas that would be good redevelopment sites. Since we have an aging housing stock, it is important that we continue to fo focus on supporting the private investment in those homes with grant programs that we have available for residents, like Home for Generations 1 and 2 and fr the Front Door Grant Program. In its first year of the Front Door Grant Program, a $188,000 investment drove over $1 million in private value exterior improvements in 73 homes. Both of these programs have been well received and I would like to see them continue. And now candidates will make their closing statements. Bill Kicker will begin. I would like to thank the League of Women Voters for the opportunity you've given all of us candidates to introduce ourselves and express our thoughts on a vast array of topics concerning the city. I would also like to thank the residents of Ward 2 for their support in electing me their representative to the City Council. It has been an honor and my pl pleasure to fulfill these duties. In my four years on the Council, I have seen firsthand many things that I support a city and its leadership that are focused on the safety and health of its residents through a strong police department, a full time fire department, great health care, and continued investment in our many beautiful parks and recreational trails. Continued support in our infrastructure needs by aggressively maintaining our residential roads through street reconstruction and our city water and sewer infrastructure upgrades. Coon Rapids is a city with sensible and conscientious management and leadership. Throughout my responses, I have demonstrated my willingness to be involved in my community in many different ways, supporting my children, coaching, leading parent groups in schools, participating in many civic organizations, and being a member of several organizations, organizational boards. I probably, proudly served the residents of Ward 2 for four years and look forward to potential of opportun potential opportunity of serving four more years. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Kicker and Carrie Ray Rauer, candidates for Ward 2, for sharing your views with the public. We'll take a short break before meeting with our candidates for Ward 4. Well, 
<gasps> oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> and now Carrie Raywauer will give her closing statement. Thank you, I appreciate it. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for providing our voters with balanced information and for setting up these forums, which will help our residents of Coon Rapids learn about all of our candidates. I'd like to thank all of you who have taken the time to watch this forum, and I appreciate your activism in your government and in voting. These are the fundamentals of our great democracy. I would like to ask you for your vote. By voting for me, you will have someone to provide balance on the council and to represent all of the people of Coon Rapids. Please connect with me at carryforcoonrapids.com. Community engagement is crucial, and with your help and your voice, we can build a better city for all together. One more thank you to both of our candidates, Bill Kicker and Carrie Ray Rauer for sharing your views with the public, and for running for elected office in Ward 2. Now, we'll take a short break before meeting with our candidates for Ward 4. Did you know you can report problems to the city with your smartphone? Download the Coon Rapids app. The reported feature allows you to describe the problem, snap a photo, and submit it directly to the city work order system. It's an easy way to report a pothole broken street light, or other neighborhood concern. No smartphone? Then hop online and report your concern through the city's website. City maintenance problems solved the easy way. Coon Rapids reported. Welcome back to Meet the Candidates. We'll hear from Jeff Cosman and Jennifer Geisler running for City Council Ward 4. We'll begin with an opening statement Candidates can explain their background, why they're running for office, and their goals for Coon Rapids. And we'll begin with Jeff Cosman. Thanks. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for having us here tonight so we can explain to our voters how we stand on different issues. Again, my name is Jeffrey Cosman. My wife and I, Lana, have three boys, Cody, Austin, and Zachary. Zachary is the last of the three, and he's still in high school at Coon Rapids High School. He'll be a sophomore this year. Cody is in college, and Austin has his own job. I did a lot of volunteering uh, while the kids were growing up. I was a uh, president of the Coon Rapids Boys Soccer Booster Club. I coached a lot of soccer during the summertime. I was involved with different church activities, and just like being a leader in a leadership role where I could help people in whatever they need to have done. So just leading being there for people and helping people. And I want to take that and take it to the city council. Jennifer Geisler. Thank you. I'd also like to thank the League of Women Voters for this opportunity to share our thoughts with um, the citizens of Coon Rapids. So I'm Jenny Geisler and I've lived in Coon Rapids since 1983. I'm here with my husband, Jeff, and our, we have a son, Chris, daughter-in-law, Jess, and two grandchildren, Haley and Cam. So I currently am your representative on Ward 4. I've been your representative since 2014, and I'm honored to serve in this role. Um, prior to being on the council, I was on planning commission and our economic development commission, and I've served and tried to bring back to the city. Um, I'm running for re-election as we've made progress, but there's still more things to do, and I would like to be your servant and help you in the city of Coon Rapids. Thank you. Thank you. And Jennifer, you'll be the first to answer our next question, which is a very timely one. The Census Bureau has estimated that Coon Rapids may be 20% racially diverse as of 2020. Research shows that regions that attain more economic growth are those with greater racial inclusion and smaller racial income gaps. What are your thoughts on how the city can address barriers to racial equity in Coon Rapids? Thank you for the question. Um, diversity is something that's important to me and I recognize that in a lot of the things within our community. Recently I brought forward a resolution to a workshop for our city council so doing some support and advocating and showing the support from the council and the city for diversity. 
Sadly, I did not get support to bring that forward to, our count, to a council in a vote. Um, so I'm, I'm moving forward. I'm working on with Council Member Johnson. We'll be creating a task force that starts in September to work on how can we be more welcoming, how can we bring inclusion. Because I know we do a lot of things, but we, pro we just don't do enough yet, and we want to work through that. Um, I've also got a proposal ready for a workshop on how we can restructure some of our commissions to be able to bring in more diverse voices from our community. Because if you look at our council right now, there's all white people, there's only one woman, there's only one person under 40, or under 50, sorry. And, and with that, we need to be able to make sure that we are a representative body to our community. Jeff Cosman. Thanks. Um, when I read the question, I understand this to be about racial income gap. I think a good the good, a good paying job is the ticket to evening out the income gap. Um, I personally would like to see job fairs. I would like to see the city of Coon Rapids work together with the Chamber of Commerce and the businesses in Coon Rapids to create job fairs for the people in Coon Rapids. Uh, I think it's exciting to be able to, if you can work at home, excuse me, not at home, but if you could work in Coon Rapids and live in Coon Rapids at the same time, I think that's a positive, uh, effect on a person's lifestyle. In addition, owning your own business is wonderful. I have a lot of respect for people who own their business, own their own business because they take risk and I respect that and they gain so much out of running their own business. For those of you who are thinking about running their business but they're not sure, the city of Coon Rapids has a program where they can walk you through that process of running your own business. But as far as racial, the racial in our community, I think it's everywhere we go, church, work, in the parks, in the places we play, it's everywhere, we're surrounded by it. We need to come to grips with it and accept it and um, love each other. Thanks. Thank you. Jeff, cities respond to county, state, and federal directions regarding COVID. Are there other steps specific to Coon Rapids that should be initiated? I don't know if there's some that should be initiated, but I know like tonight, the school board is actually voting on how they're going to run their school's classes uh, this year. So even as we're doing what we're doing, they're doing their thing too. So that's something that's being considered in the community that, that another part of our community that's considering that also. But I know the city of Coon Rapids is doing great, and I'm sorry I can't give examples. They're following up with making sure that the businesses are safe, the people are safe, initiatives are being brought out to make sure that everybody's taking this serious, that it's something that we understand can be dangerous to some, and it's something that um, we should all be alert, and I think I give kudos to the city of Coon Rapids and city council for what they've done. Thank you. Jennifer. Thank you. Um, yes, the, the city has to follow certain mandates from the federal and, and county levels. You know, we do this to ensure that the funding that we receive can be kept and that we don't put an extra burden on our taxpayers because we did something wrong. Um, we've done things where we've refunded a quarter of our, the liquor fees for our existing businesses because they were closed a quarter of the year. We've created more flexibility in how the outdoor dining can be done to be able to help these businesses that were impacted. You know, and are there things that we could be do, di do differently? In reality, we could go on one end of the spectrum and try and do things way more re restrictive, or on the other end of the spectrum, try and say we're gonna not do what the state mandates. To do that, would cost our citizens of Coon Rapids significantly from a tax perspective, to whether it's either in lawsuits or enforcement. And so from the best way that we can respond is to ensure that we work within the existing guidelines and help our businesses and be flexible to give them what they need to do to survive this. Moving on to a sunny question. <laughs> The current solar ordinance permits only rooftop installations, not solar gardens. Would you support solar fields in appropriate locations that residents could subscribe to? Jennifer Geisler. 
Yes, absolutely. You know, so the, the challenge in Coon Rapids is that a solar garden needs roughly two and a half acres from a minimum perspective. And there aren't that many locations that would be possible. You know, so to that, I would support, you know, doing more solar also on the rooftops, which is permitted, you know, of our larger buildings, our ice arena, our public works, even City Hall here, we have had discussions upon that. Because I think moving towards a cleaner, more sustainable energy is a good thing, and there's things that we can do. Um, and, and that takes less of a burden um, off of our coal fault, coal fired plants and things like that that generate electricity. So if we had the opportunity, there was something that was developed, could fit in the city, I would absolutely support it. Jeff Cosman. Yeah, I think uh, having a second option for solar is a good thing. It kind of supports the idea of the free market where people have a choice of how they choose to get, where they get their solar. Would like to know what the cost is gonna be like it's going to be a government run thing or if it's going to be a private sector run. Location, of course, is important. Councilwoman Geyser has kind of touched on that a little bit already. Um, and then how are we going to transmit the energy from point A to point B? And will this be year round energy or not? But I, I get the idea of what, why this would be something that could be good for the community. Just got some answers that need to be, or questions that need to be answered first. Thank you. Our next question has to do with a totally different kind of energy, and that's the energy of youth. What do you see as the greatest need or challenge for youth in Coon Rapids, and how would you, as an elected official, help solve this issue? Jeff Cosman. The challenge that, I come to my, that comes to my mind isn't just in Coon Rapids, it's all over the country, and that's education. Currently, I have a, uh, a son who's gonna be a sophomore, and I can tell you flat out, last year he did not get a good education. He is not fit for the learning from home. It's not how he learns. It's not how he gets information. It's not how he, it just doesn't work for his learning style is what I'm trying to say. I've talked to a lot of different teachers the last nine months, not just from Coon Rapids, but all over, and none of them have good things to say about what happened last year. So the biggest challenge for our youth right now is their education. A small percentage of people can learn from home do well, but many of them can't. I feel like we need to get our kids back in school, put a mask on them if we need to, give them to the teachers too, everybody wear a mask, but let's get our kids back in teachers so they can raise their hands and say, I have a question, and the teacher can be there one-on-one -on -one to help, or stay after school and get the help that they need, again, one-on-one. -on -one. Thanks. Jennifer Geisler. Thank you. As I thought about this question, you know, if I was answering this six, seven months ago, my answer would be very different because the challenges for youth were very different than, than, than they are now with the pandemic. And, you know, Mr. Cosman makes some points that, you know, for me, it's about access. It's about the ability for, for our children to learn. And we have to recognize that there are some requirements that need social distancing and we need to be able to provide um, that ability to distance learn. And with that, there's a barrier to learn there that not everyone has access to internet. And so through that, you know, for me, it's looking at, you know, we've talked about, can we have a map of free Wi-Fi zones within the city? So it's, people know where they could go if it's sitting in a parking lot in their car to be able to connect to an internet to complete their schoolwork, to be able to find ways that we could potentially do this in our parks, to be able to have access to our kids so they can be successful in what they need to do. Thank you. Jennifer Geisler, if elected, what would you do to provide a healthy business climate? So for me, a healthy business climate starts with consumers. I need to have somebody to shop. I need to have somebody to patronize, patron my business. And so with that, it becomes a strong, vibrant community to support the businesses. And with that, to me, it's making sure that we are maintaining our housing stock, the front door and Homes for Generations programs to be able to then attract new people into our community that can then support 
um, these businesses because every time that we I hear things like I want a grocery store I want this the questions that we get are where are the rooftops where are the people I need to have that vibrant community to support the businesses it is a, a a symbiotic relationship there and so for me it's working on can we do things from a planning perspective or a zoning perspective to be able to enable more spaces and where businesses can be in neighborhoods and drive the community and business relationship together. Jeff Cosman. Thank you. I agree with a lot with what Councilwoman Geiser just stated. I think we need to bring in more businesses from the outside. There's a lot of businesses in Coon Rapids that are sitting empty, and we need to fill those businesses up. A couple, I mentioned this before, a couple ideas that I have is one, a lot of businesses were lost in Minneapolis because of the riots. So let's find those business owners and let's see if they're interested in a second, uh, a second chance in Coon Rapids. And as I talk to people, as I go door to door, they're thinking that's a great idea too. And they also like the idea of let's talk to these businesses in other suburbs close to us who are being successful already and see if they want to expand, not uproot, but expand their businesses. They find a way to be successful in Anoka. They find a way to be successful in Andover or Brooklyn Park. Let's them take that success equation to Coon Rapids where they can be um, successful not only in their current uh, business, but also in Coon Rapids. So if we can bring those two together, I think, uh, and combine with what Councilman Geyser added, I think that'd be a great way uh, to create a healthy business climate. Switching gears to another topic, where people live. Jeff Cosman, do you favor more affordable or more market rate apartments in Coon Rapids? I don't favor one over the other. They both have a purpose, they're both valid, and I support both of them. What I just, I need to look at the numbers and I, I'm not very familiar with what do we have now, uh, how much land is available to do more building, if there's any at all. We've, the city of Coon Rapids is pretty much maxed out on its building. So uh, there's too much information out there for me to just say yes or no or one or the other. Like I said, I believe in both of them. They're both failed, I get it. Um, but let's look, I need to look at the whole equation and I'm not on the council right now. Councilwoman Geyser is. Um, I just haven't had the chance to do the homework necessary to answer that question, but it's something I do want to look into, so that is answered soon. Jennifer Geisler. Yes. So for me, it's a yes. It's not an either-or conversation. It's a both conversation. Um, we need to have housing options that meet all of the needs of our residents. And when you look at an affordable housing, you know, a one-bedroom is... $1124, $25 a month. And that is still an awful lot of money when you think about that. You know, it's over $12,000 a year to actually pay for housing. And so affordable does not mean cheap, right? And so we have to be able to have housing that can meet all different income levels. We also need housing that can meet different styles of living. So in Coon Rapids, we've recently done the Autumn Glen Senior Project and the River North Senior Project to be able to give opportunities for our seniors to be able to stay within Coon Rapids and find housing that can be within their income brackets. So I support, you know, any sort of development in our community that's going to bring new families, that's going to be able to maintain families within our community and allow them to stay here in a place that meets their budget. Continuing on with a different type of building, Jennifer Geisler, do you favor over a $20 million expansion of the ice arena to include basketball courts, a walking track, and indoor playground? Thank you. Where, where there's two different views on this one. The first one is the idea and the concept. I absolutely love the idea and the concept of having a building that we can have an indoor playground so we have a place for our children to come play in the winter, to be able to expand the recreational opportunities of our youth to be able to play volleyball, basketball, pickleball, uh, what have you, to have a walking track that our seniors can use. The flip side of that is there's a budget. 
And I need to be able to make sure that I understand Right now, we have a lot of want assessments. We haven't fully done a needs assessment. That's what has to really happen so we can understand that true need and can our community absorb that burden of this new building within our community. Having the amenity is great, but we also have to know, especially with the COVID-19 impacts and the budgets, can we afford to do it right now? Thank you. Jeff Kosman. Thanks. Currently, we have our YMCA in Coon Rapids. We have, um, I believe they're in Coon Rapids, they're right on the edge of Coon Rapids. I should know that, but I apologize. But anyways, the YMCA is uh, an existing that answers all those functions. We have other uh, workout centers or gyms that also answer most of those uh, um, functions. The North Town Mall is a great place to go walking uh, and it's free, no charge, and you can walk from 7 a.m. to as late as you want. I, I understand the idea behind the facility, but I would like, if it's gonna come to an existence, I would like to see the private, private sector figure that one out instead of the city. Um, I just feel like, let the private sector decide, let the market decide if that is something that this city needs currently right now, instead of, having the city decide this is something we want to spend money on. I think the city needs to worry about just taking care of the city, the roads, the bridges, et cetera, et cetera, and let the private sector decide if this is something they want to do. Thank you. Circling back to business, please describe any experiences you have owning or managing a business as well as specific advocacy efforts on behalf of the local small business community. Jeff Cosman. Sure, thanks. I've worked for seven years for a franchise restaurant owner. I saw the franchise grow from one to two to three different stores. I, was side by, I worked side by side with him as he took each step through uh, to get each of his stores built. Um, I, when I say I worked side by side, it was more or less, I mean, I went to a meeting once in a while with him, but it's more like he, it was feedback from what he was letting me know what was going on step by step. So he wanted his management team to know what he was doing at all times so we could understand what it would take to open up a business. And it was quite the learning experience. I really enjoyed it. Um, so not only did I get to learn how to take 25 people and train them all to work all these different positions and schedule them all and make sure everyone's uh, accountable and getting, uh, getting paid and getting their jobs and, and working. Uh, but at the same time, it was kind of nice to see from the business standpoint of it, finding how you go about opening up a new business from scratch. Jennifer. Yes, thank you. So I've got two relevant kinds of experiences. You know, I was on the board of a national nonprofit and due to a retirement, I was thrust into the operational management role. So for two years, I was responsible for hiring, HR, benefits, payroll, finances, taxes, um, banking, audit, everything that it took to run that nonprofit for a couple years. And to do that, I relied on the fact that I do have my MBA from the University of St. Thomas. And the other thing, my husband has worked for a family business for 40 years. And having a family business means that while I don't work there, it's at my kitchen table every night. And I understand the challenges, you know, have, having gone through a fire and having to rebuild the business, having to move locations, having to be able to deal with all of the different aspects of the changes over 40 years of running a business. So with that, I also use that within the city. I help and I'm an advocate for any of our small businesses. I've worked on looking to change the liquor licensing as well as the bar and tap room and to support the food truck ordinances that will help our local businesses. Do you think that Coon Rapids Boulevard is healthy and successful? If not, what would you do to change that? If so, what would you see as the highlights of Coon Rapids Boulevard? Jennifer Geisler. So Coon Rapids Boulevard is near and dear to my heart. I was on the Coon Rapids Boulevard initial task force many, many years ago. And with that, the is it healthy in aspects? There are elements, yes. Is it successful? There are elements, yes. Is there more work? 
Yes. Um, Port Evergreen, the industrial area is moving along and I, with the Foley grade separation, that's gonna bring new opportunities in that area. Port Riverwalk, we've finally since um, the recession of 2008, that started to grow and with the center development, Speedway is now there, a caribou is coming on that next corner was just approved by planning. That's evolving. Port Wellness with Mercy has been growing and that's been vibrant. Port Campus Square is our challenge. That, you know, it was with the ice arena. If we do go forward with the rec center, that would improve that area. The Goodwill Center has improved. The larger challenge is the Family Center Mall, which is privately owned with no desire to change. Jeff Cosman, your thoughts on Coon Rapids Boulevard? Sure, thanks. Literally yesterday, someone, uh, was talking to me and he'd said, we just, he just moved back to Coon Rapids and he grew up here and he goes like, he moved back a couple of years ago. He goes, it's just the same, same old Coon Rapids that I saw 30 years ago when I moved away. So that I think tells me that we need to make some changes on Coon Rapids Boulevard. Councilwoman guys is correct. There's been some improvements. It's looking good. We've got a lot of work to do. It's pretty obvious. I think we're t preaching to the choir because as I go door to door here, everybody's already telling me the same thing. Uh, these people who live in Coon Rapids, or at least Ward 4, they know what Coon Rapids looks like. They know what the Coon Rapids Boulevard specifically looks like. And they're not happy with the way it looks. I mean, they appreciate some of the changes that's been done, but really we're just preaching to the choir on this subject. So we need to make some changes. It's going in the right direction. If I'm elected, I want to be a part of that process to make sure it gets revamped and refreshed and something we can all be proud of. Thanks. Thank you. And Jeff, you'll lead us off on our last question. City Council's chief responsibility is to set strategies for the city. What strategic initiatives would you push for? And I think we've been answering this question all night for the most part, which we've been talking about Coon Rapids Boulevard, and as we've been talking about bringing in businesses and as we've been talking about houses for our, the house owners and being able to uh, update their houses and the programs that we offer. So I don't think either one of us are gonna probably have much of a different story on that. Um, it's, like I said, it's what we've been talking about all night. It's based on the questions that you've been giving us all night. And I don't think that changes uh, at all, really. Thank you. Jennifer Geisler. Thank you. Um, there are definitely things that we need to keep going. The front door program, the Homes for Generations programs, to building that small, strong community and vibrancy. Um, another thing that we really haven't touched on tonight is about our community services. We have a very strong police department um, that gets taxed because we've got more people in our city and we haven't really changed their staffing for 10 years. The same thing with our firefighters, and they are our first responders, and as our community is getting older, they ha have more calls. And so we need to be able to make sure that we are maintaining the levels of service our community um, demands. And then it's looking at how do we have community engagement to be able to bring diverse voices into our city and to make sure that we're hearing everyone, as well as having you know, not only the housing, but the community amenities that make people want to come to Coon Rapids to make them want to be proud of living in our city. And so it's a lot of hard work and it doesn't happen fast, but I'm up to the task. And now it's time to wrap it all up with a bowl. Our candidates will make closing statements. Jennifer Geisler. Thank you so much. Um, thank you again to the League of Women Voters and any of you out there watching. Um, I. If you have any questions, you can always reach me um, through the city. I'm proud to represent the city of Coon Rapids and I've spent many, many years doing my volunteer work and supporting our city and to making it a better place for all of us to live. Um, I would appreciate your support and your vote and I look forward to hoping to serve you for another four years on the city council. Jeff Cosman. Thanks again, excuse me, thanks again to the League of Women Voters for having us here. I just want to say I've had a blast going out knocking on doors. We started with a, a, a food drive for the ACBC Food Shelf, and through that experience, I've met so many different people, 
And we, I did this to show people, hey, I, I want to make a difference in the community and I want to make a difference on city council. But what I've learned more than anything else, it isn't me that's making the difference in the food drive, it's the people in Ward 4 that's making a difference in the food drive. Not only are people generous, they're gener the generosity is just overwhelming. I put one bag on their door and they give me two or three bags back. Over 500 bags of food has been given to the ACBC food shelves, thanks to the people and the community in Ward 4. And so to them, I just wanna say thank you you're a great group of people. I'm laughing with people. I'm having fun. I'm listening to their stories. I'm enjoying their people. Ward 4 is the best people ever. I, there's a lot of people I still need to meet, and I look forward to meeting a lot more people. And thank you very much for all the food that you've given the ACBC Food Shelf. Here's a big thank you to Jeff Cosman and Jennifer Geisler for sharing your views with the public and for running for Ward 4 City Council. We'll take a short break before speaking with candidates for the at-large city council position. We'll hear from Pat Carlson and Christopher Geisler running for city council, the at-large seat. We'll begin with an opening statement. Candidates can explain their background, why they're running for office, and their goals for Coon Rapids. And we'll begin with Christopher Geisler. First of all, I want to say thank you to the League of Women Voters for this opportunity to connect with our community and your mission to engage and empower citizens in the election process. My name is Christopher Geisler and I am running for the Coon Rapids City Council at large. I come to you tonight already representing this community in a variety of ways. I'm here as a citizen representative to the Transportation Advisory Board where I represent 26 cities across two counties from Falcon Heights to St. Francis, including Coon Rapids, a role I have held for four years. I am here as a planning commissioner to the city of Coon Rapids where I approve developments within the city and make formal recommendations to the city council to help our city grow, develop, and prosper. I'm here tonight as a father of two children, Cameron and Haley, as well as a husband to my wife, Jess. But most importantly, I am here tonight as a lifelong resident of the city of Coon Rapids. I'm here tonight because I believe in being engaged in my local community and giving my time and energy to my community. I'm here tonight to ask for your support and your vote in the upcoming election and to make our city the best it can be. Thank you. Pat Carlson. I also want to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum tonight. Good night, I'm Pat Carlson. I grew up on Hanson Boulevard and my family moved here in 1963. I met my wife, Sue Cronin, in the halls of the Coon Rapids High School. Sue's family moved here in 1955 when they moved into their brand new Orrin Thompson home. We raise our children, our sons, Patrick and Derek, on Lily Street. I currently have three grandchildren, Daniel, Oliver, and Xavier. I served proudly with the Coon Rapids Police Department for 31 years. I've been volunteering this community since I was a teenager. I've done everything from coaching youth sports to visiting people in nursing homes. I'm running for council because I want to continue to serve this city. I want to serve Coon Rapids to the best of my ability, and I want to be a voice for every resident in this city. And Pat Carlson will lead us off on answering our first question. The Census Bureau has estimated that Coon Rapids may be 20% racially diverse as of 2020. Research shows that regions that attain more economic growth are those with greater racial inclusion and smaller racial income gaps. What are your thoughts on how the city can address barriers to racial equity in Coon Rapids? Thank you. Coon Rapids provides opportunity to all of its residents. We have great schools. We have a very well-respected, reasonably priced college. We have a vocational college, not in Coon Rapids, but it's very close. We also have a variety of jobs for people of all skill sets and education levels. My priority and my strength will be with inclusion and community outreach. I'm a bridge builder. I've been bridging, building, building bridges in this community for years. I've already reached out to several members of our community and they're excited. I have a group of people right now that want to work together to put together a plan and implement a way to start bridging our community, bringing people together and fostering positive relationships between all members of our community. Thank you. Christopher Geisler. 
Thank you. I, for one, completely agree with the Census Bureau's assessment. The more diverse our community is, the stronger it will be. But I think that we can go a long way to embracing diversity and inclusion to a deeper level within the city. We could sit up here and list names for 60 seconds to talk about how this is an important topic today. But I think we can go further than that. I think we need to be able to say as a city, as a council, to say we support diversity and inclusion and equity within our city. And we need to be able to say that affirmatively and without hesitation and without doubt. We need to be able to say that at every moment of the day so that everyone who feels they might not be included can have the chance to feel that they do have a champion to be included. The city has done a lot of good steps. They're moving forward to have a more progressive program. But the first step is to say, we want you in our community and you are wanted here and you are included. And Christopher, you'll lead us off on the next question, which is another timely one. Cities respond to county, state, and federal directions regarding COVID. Are there other steps specific to Coon Rapids that should be initiated? So first and foremost, following the laws of the county, the state, and the federal government is the bare minimum our city can do. I think the city has stepped up and done a lot of great things. When we look at the CARES program, which is helping businesses in from starting September 1st to the 18th to apply for some grants and support if they've been hurt by COVID. When we have the housing assistance program that the state is pushing out where you can just call 211 to try to get some help. It's a good start to keeping us moving forward. We need to advertise these programs to our citizens to help them get connected. We should use every dollar that's available to us to help them get this done. But I think we also could have been a little more proactive in some spaces. Um, Costco was saying, Costco was requiring masks by May 4th. Um, we waited until the state required it because it became contentious. I think we have an opportunity to embrace leadership and to truly value lives over politics and to ensure that everyone feels safe in their community. Thank you. Pat Carlson. COVID has it affected so many people, physically, financially, psychologically. It's hurt our businesses, it's hurt our residents, it's hurt our, our nonprofit organizations. We need to work together to use any tools we have available, whether they're local, state, or federal, to try to mitigate the damage caused by this pandemic. I'm glad that the city is currently using the money received from the, the, the CARES Act. Um, and I'm glad that they've allotted the $1.6 million to start helping our businesses and get them going again. I want our city to continue working with our businesses to help to be flexible as our businesses have to make decisions and make changes based on some of the state mandates. Thank you. On a different topic altogether, the current solar ordinance permits only rooftop installations not solar gardens. Would you support solar fields in appropriate locations that residents could subscribe to? Pat? I support all renewable energy. I believe that's good to have choices. If a business wants to come to Coon Rapids and put in solar fields, and if they have subscribers, I'm all for it. We're gonna have to have some considerations. Is the land appropriate? probably going to have some infrastructure needs. Probably want to have a study to see how it might impact the environment or the surrounding residents. But if making a change to this ordinance helps us to remove that barrier and move forward to another renewable energy source, I'm all for it. Thank you. Christopher. First and foremost, I'm supportive of sustainability. Uh, I drove a plug-in hybrid here charged by my solar panels on my house today. Uh, sustainability is a core piece of who I am and, and what I support. Um, that said, I, I, I'm questioning still the land use appropriateness of a solar garden. Uh, one megawatt of a, solar, of a high efficiency solar field costs about four acres. And in four acres of land, we built 184 apartment affordable living behind Muddy Cow, or we approved that behind there. 
to get 25% of the city onto solar energy, we need 40 to 50 acres set aside for that. That's the size of the central homes development of about 136 single family homes. So there is a true opportunity cost as we consider this. If we have spaces that cannot be developed in other usable ways, absolutely, let's consider solar, let's put it there. But I would rather see the city investigate in other ways to put solar on municipal buildings and focus on areas where we can continue to develop our land and redevelop our land in active measures first. Let's turn our attention to another kind of energy in Coon Rapids, the crackling energy of youth. What do you see as the greatest need or challenge for youth in Coon Rapids? And how would you, as an elected official, help solve that issue? Christopher Geisler? I muddled on this one a lot. There's, there's a lot of issues that are affecting our students, especially today. But the, the one that comes to my mind right now is especially prevalent because of COVID. Many of our students are either in a hybrid or full-time learning at home. But in order to do that, you have to have access to the internet. When we consider that half of our students, one out of every two, are eligible for free or reduced lunch, do we truly believe that all of those families have equal access to the internet, have equal opportunities for their students to learn, to turn in their homework, to do research for a paper? I think it's ultra critical right now because of the environment we're in, but I do not see us moving away from a digital future. It doesn't make sense. So I would like to see the city move towards an internet assistance program to helping every family in the city, especially those with students, get access to the internet because access to the internet will improve outcomes across the board, education, employment, jobs, everything. Pat Carlson. I spent 19 years working out of the Kunapas Middle School as a detective assigned to schools. Most of the kids I worked with were at-risk youth. Our kids have so many challenges as it is. My concern right now, my biggest concern, is the effect of this pandemic on the closing of schools and on the shutting down of a lot of the kids' positive alternative activities. The best way to combat some of our youth issues is with positive socialization with other kids, keeping kids busy, and engaging family. When you look across the country with all the incidents of depression, increased drug use, increased alcohol use, that, that, that doesn't, kids will have the same issues. So I would like to work with our community partners and community education, CRAA, and the Community Strength Foundation to come up with some COVID safe activities to keep our kids busy and keep our families engaged. Thinking about business in Coon Rapids, Pat, if elected, what would you do to provide a healthy business climate? I've spoken to a lot of business owners during this campaign. I'm gonna support the things that will make this city seem more attractive to businesses. Public safety, infrastructure, fiscal responsibility. We need to try to make sure we keep our taxes from getting out of control. I will advocate for our local businesses. I will encourage people to shop local. And I will always be a voice to the ideas and concerns of our business owners and managers. Christopher? First and foremost, we have to keep our businesses in business right now. Uh, it's a challenging time for everyone, not only homeowners, but businesses especially, and just citizens trying to keep their jobs. I think the city's done a great job with fee waivers for businesses that were forced to be shut down for a period of time by keeping tax rates and let the levy as stable as possible and by those grant platforms uh, programs that, we, uh, that were starting to be offered with the CARES dollars. But that's right now. Going forward, my focus is, is on the phrase easy to do business with. The city should be easy to do business with with every single business and citizen in the community. The permitting process for whatever is happening should be easy and transparent. Everyone should know their role, everyone should know what's required before they start. Running a business is not an easy prospect. We don't need to make it any harder. So let's keep trying to streamline it. 
Let's help businesses be compliant with our codes and ordinances, and let's try to avoid any gotcha games that might exist. What are your thoughts? Do you favor more affordable or more market rate apartments in Coon Rapids? Christopher Geisler. So with this, I don't believe it's an either or discussion. Uh, when we look at the new apartments that were built by the Riverdale station, there is one affordable and one market rate. Both are full. Both are almost full at uh, almost a year ahead of the expectation. But I think we need to talk a little bit about what does affordable mean. An affordable efficiency apartment costs $12,000 a year in rent. So a starting teacher or public servant will be spending 40% of their salary in an affordable apartment by themselves. And the same is true as if you're a family. If you're in a family, you need to have incomes of $60,000 a year to afford an affordable apartment at a reasonable percentage of your income. Affordable and market rate apartments are the way we get started, but affordable isn't as bad as it sounds. We need to give every family an opportunity to work their way up the ladder. From public servants, from those who are in hardship, moving on to home ownership, moving into retirement, all of those are options that we need to support within the community. Thank you. Pat Carlson. We need housing options for all income levels. The goal is to have something for everyone, whether it's high density affordable housing or it's single family homes or whether it's senior living. Apartment life has become more desirable. More people are looking for apartments. Every time we add an apartment building, though, we have to look at the, uh, we have to weigh between um, adding to that housing option to how it may affect our services and infrastructure. I would support more market rate apartments but I would have concerns about increasing uh, the number of affordable apartment units that we have in Coon Rapids. And the reason is I worry about oversaturation. I worry about if the market changes, how that might negatively impact some of our older affordable housing units. Thank you. Another kind of building question. Pat, do you favor over a $20 million expansion of the ice arena to include basketball courts, a walking track, and indoor playground? I could see how that would look attractive. Adding more year-round options and activities and also helping us compete with cities like Andover and Brooklyn Park. A couple quick questions I would have though would be, uh, how much will it cost to maintain that and to staff it after it's built? Also, I'd like to know uh, will it serve the majority of residents? And I would also like to know if it would negatively impact some of our places like Lifetime Fitness, Experience, and the YMCA. Right now, especially with the economic uncertainty, I think it's a bad time to consider adding a $20 million tax bill. If we were going to do that, we would have to really look closely um, at it, we'd have to have a lot of input from the community. And something like this would need to go to referendum. People would need to vote on something this expensive. Christopher Geisler. The planned expansion, the, the plans just aren't there yet. Uh, we're, we're not ready to even decide if we want to do this. And $20 million is a huge investment in a great year. It, it's not a great year. There, there's a lot of uncertainty right now especially at the city budget. We're being conservative with that to ensure that we can maintain the level of service we give our residents right now. So right now is not the time to consider this type of investment. But if such a plan were to come forward and we had, the, we had a good year and we, it was feasible, I still think there are other questions that we need to ask. Is this a nice amenity to have or are there unmet needs in the community? Is there something that we can't do because of this facility being absent? And then what's the operational model? Once the capital expense is gone and paid for, how are we operating it? Are we going to bring in large attractions like tournaments? Are they gonna be a basketball, volleyball, or pickleball? That's contemplated already, but what about martial arts, events shows, career fairs, education fairs? All of these other things need to be fleshed out and, and desirable for this building before we begin construction. Getting back to business, 
Please describe any experiences you have owning or managing a business, as well as specific advocacy efforts on behalf of the local small business community. Christopher. So my family has been in the small business game since I was born. Uh, it currently resides in Robbinsdale. It's now a generational business. I've grown up seeing the challenges of running a small business with a handful of employees, growing it to now having a spread of employees that are just out of high school to approaching retirement. I've also sat on the board of directors of a nonprofit, which adds in another layer of expense of trying to get in grants and managing donors, as well as managing capital growth, as well as managing just your product. But I've also spent time in large corporations. I work for a multi-billion dollar corporation and an internal audit. I know the lingo, I know the speak, I know the problems, I know what they do to overcome those problems. And frankly, my wife is a self-published author. We're managing a business internal in our own house that way. I know what it means to be easy to do business with. I know the lingo. I know the challenges that are out there. And while I may not operate a brick and mortar today, it does not take me much to understand what these businesses are, and I am here for them. Pat. All businesses are important, but small businesses are vital to any community. Not only do they supply jobs and services and goods, but they also help us in many other ways. I spent two years going door to door to small businesses to raise money for our food shelf. I was humbled by the generosity shown by our small businesses. I've never managed a business, I've never owned a business. When I don't know something, I don't guess as to how it should be run. I've spent a lot of time visiting with our managers and our business owners, asking them about their concerns and trying to get their ideas. I will be an advocate for our local businesses. Personally, Sue and I have been in every case that we can, every, anytime we can do it, we have been shopping local, dining local. And whenever we can, we're using our social media platform to try to promote our local businesses. Pat, weigh in on a Coon Rapids question. Do you think Coon Rapids Boulevard is healthy and successful? If not, what would you do to change that? And if so, what would you see as the highlights of Coon Rapids Boulevard? I had a wonderful conversation with a couple of business owners named Henrique and Monroetta. They have a business sort of by the ice arena in that area. I asked them what the city could do for their business to make it better. One of the first things they did was point to Coon Rapids Boulevard and say, we need to do something about Coon Rapids Boulevard. Now, the area down by Mercy Hospital looks pretty good. The area at Port Riverwalk, down by uh, the Lilliput, it's going to be great when it's finished. But Coon Rapids Boulevard in the area of the ice arena, that should be a real focal point for our town. You can go east and west a lot of different ways through Coon Rapids, but Coon Rapids Boulevard should be a showcase for our city. And so I think we really should work hard to uh, revitalize that area. Thank you. Christopher. The boulevard is doing great in some places, and it is awaiting renewed investment in others. There's 136 new homes going in in Port Riverwalk down by Elfland Park. Port Wellness by Mercy is thriving with a refreshed look, new businesses, replacing parking lots full of unknown cars. We've got 184 new apartment units going in in Port Evergreen. Just this last week, I approved at the Planning Commission a caribou coffee going in by the entrance to the dam. We're seeing continued investment in the boulevard. We're seeing the plan come to fruition to revitalize it. But there are places that look material, this, materially the same as it did when I was in grade school. And there are good plans there to make, to revitalize and grow it but we're seeking good partners within those landowners and businesses to accomplish those plans. The city can't do it alone. We need the folks who own the property along the boulevard and the assistance of the county who owns the road itself to work with the city to revitalize our namesake road. We've heard many of your opinions and views. City Council's chief responsibility is to set strategies for the city, so weaving those views and opinions into strategies. What strategic initiatives would you push for, Christopher Geisler? So again, setting a strategy is a cooperative event within the city. Uh, you have to get the entire council together as well as the staff leadership. 
And it's not a one person dictatorship. We have to work together. So the first thing I would bring is cooperation. And that is our strategic initiative to begin with. But behind that, there's three main areas that I want to support. Sustainability. We can move forward on our sustainability journey by increasing where we are in the Green Step Cities program. We can also make sustainable financial decisions. I want to make sure that wherever we're doing, we can continue to support without massive up and down swings in our levy to maintain it. We can focus on development and redevelopment within the city, as we've mentioned along the boulevard, as well as other areas. We're getting to our undeveloped islands, but we need to keep going. And finally, I want to see us focus on infrastructure and specifically positively financing our forward-looking capital projects. We keep borrowing and bonding to pay for our projects, which adds debt expense to every one of them, where we could be proactively gaining some interest as we're, as we're going. Thank you. Pat Carlson? I believe that the first responsibility of any government is to provide public safety. As I go door to door and talk to people on the phone, this seems to be the issue that comes up most often. After that, I believe that we need to keep maintaining and improving our infrastructure. We need to have decent roads. We need to keep our water safe and clean. Our city needs to stay fiscally responsible so that we can be financially healthy. We need to work with our business community to help our businesses grow and encourage more businesses to come to our town. We need to fill some of those vacant buildings that we have in Coon Rapids. I want to reach out to all members of the community. I want to show them what they have here, and I, I want them to want to stay and feel the same way about Coon Rapids that I do. I also want to show off the great things that we have to prospective residents and encourage them to come to Coon Rapids, start their families here so we can continue to grow and have a vibrant community. Thank you. And now, candidates will wrap up our forum with their closing statements. Pat Carlson. First, I want to thank my fellow candidate for being here tonight and sharing his views. Sue and I like to spend our free time walking around the beautiful parks and trails that we have in Coon Rapids. And we like to spend time connecting with people in our area business and restaurants. I look at people enjoying what we have in Coon Rapids and it truly makes me hope that they feel the same way about this city that I do. I want everyone to feel the same way about Coon Rapids as I do. If I'm elected, I will serve this community with great enthusiasm. I will be, uh, uh, all my decisions will be made based upon what I believe is right for the city and right for its residents. If you'd like to know more about me, check out my website at patcarlsonforcouncil.com or go to my Pat Carlson for Council Facebook page. If you have any questions after that, by all means, email me, give me a call, I'd be happy to talk to you. Thanks again for hosting this event. Christopher Geisler. First again, thank you to the League for hosting this forum and giving every candidate tonight the op an equal opportunity to answer these questions. But I know there are many more questions beyond what was asked tonight. And frankly, 60 seconds is not a lot of time to get into the detail of any of these rather large questions. I encourage everyone to reach out and connect with me at votegeisler.com or at Christopher for Council on Facebook. I am here for your questions. I'm here for your conversation. I'm here for your concerns. But I need your support as well. Your support is how together we can make a positive change in this community, how we can go beyond accepting the status quo as the best we can do. Let me be your voice on the Coon Rapids City Council. Let me represent your family on the Coon Rapids City Council. But I can only do that if you vote whether you vote early in person, through mail-in ballot, or at your polling location on November 3rd, I am asking for your vote. Vote Christopher Geisler for Coon Rapids City Council at large. Thank you. And a hearty thank you to both our candidates, Pat Carlson and Christopher Geisler, for sharing your views with the public and for running for City Council at large. Thank you to CTN for taping and showing this forum. And thanks to our co-sponsors, Transformative Circle, Coon Rapids Women of Today, Metro North Chamber of Commerce, and the North Suburban Optimist Club. The League of Women Voters has, su has supported informed voting for over 100 years. Check out our website. In the year 2020, we have many options to vote. Exercise your right to vote.
Welcome to this forum for candidates running in legislative districts 36B and 37A. I'm Lonnie McCauley, 